Psychological defenses, it all starts from childhood. Many of the disturbances are the result of violent trauma that the soul cannot bear. The negative experiences a person experiences in early childhood, whether within the narrow family environment with parents, or the wider social environment with relatives and friends, have a serious impact on their mental health in adulthood. These experiences encompass all forms of harm that a child may experience during this stage of his life, from violence and psychological or physical abuse, not to negative emotions such as embarrassment, bullying, ostracism, or emotional blackmail and underestimation. Even in the best cases, good parents in their lives suffer from huge problems that may interfere in one way or another in their relationships with their children, such as financial obstacles, economic conditions, and psychological and social status. Although these problems are not centered around the child himself, the friction of parents in the midst of these problems with their children in their early childhood stages intensifies the child's awareness of how small and weak he is, and falls easy prey to the net of negative emotions, such as insecurity, incompetence, lack of self-confidence and guilt. In adulthood, negative experiences develop in the form of immaturity in the child's personality at times, and varying psychological disorders at other times. According to the results of a study conducted at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Psychology at the University of Tampere in Finland, to identify the impact of early family relationships on children's psychological defense mechanisms, good family relationships lead to enhance children's ability to regulate their emotions effectively, while abusive family relationships lead them to build psychological defenses to protect their emotions. In other words, children who grow up in healthy family relationships enveloped in love and passion have the ability to effectively control and regulate their emotions, unlike those who grow up in abusive family relationships, where they are unable to develop that ability, replacing it with building psychological defenses that protect their feelings from the outside world. These defenses are key mechanisms that help them deal with anxiety, and stress by distorting the truth, suppressing negative thoughts and bad emotions, thus avoiding pain and providing a measure of protection and security. But while these mechanisms offer protection, they affect the lives of these people in their future relationships, overlapping so complex with emotional relationships that you prefer to stay alone in your own bubble than to live real life and engage in an emotional relationship, just for fear of experiencing too much pain and psychological or emotional damage. Although these effects begin in early childhood, they are not clearly manifested until after adulthood when entering into romantic relationships. For example, if you grew up in early childhood at the hands of emotionally neglected or cold parents, it generates a sense of distrust of passion and love, which in adulthood develops into problems maintaining satisfying emotional relationships. So you start worrying about people who are close to you or showing interest in you, and instead of giving them the opportunity to get closer to them or exchange them for the same amount of attention, you look at their relationship from behind a candidate and prefer to stay away from them. You may justify this to yourself by putting forward imaginary reasons that are often a far cry from the main reason that lies in your fear of being hurt or injured. Dr. Manilo Zapostolo, Associate Professor at the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of Nicosia in Cyprus, and author of several books, and publications in the field of evolutionary psychology, told Maiden. People spin a lot of internal barriers to prevent themselves from entering into healthy relationships, as there are many reasons that people give an explanation for staying single. But the most common ones include having bad experiences from previous relationships, extreme selectivity in choice, and unattractive appearance. Past experiences play a pivotal role in some people staying single. When people go through failed or painful emotional experiences they think they are bad in relationships, which pushes them to develop psychological defenses that make them remain single for fear of being rejected, emotionally hurt or even fail again in the future, and convince themselves that they are still single because they prefer to live this way. Low Self-Esteem Let us publish to a recent exploratory study conducted by a researcher at the University of Nicosia. Cyprus and published in the Journal of Psychoevolutionary Sciences entitled Why Do Men Remain Single? Based on a question of the same title raised by a Reddit pioneer, the study aimed to identify the reasons why men remain single, and more than 13,000 people participated and most of their responses were analyzed, and nearly 7,000 answers were coded according to 43 categories. And according to the results, low self-esteem and low self-confidence were the second major reason why young people remain single and refrain from bonding. One of the most striking things about this study is that the answer of more than 500 people always involved the same response no matter how different its formula. 
I am still single because I have enormous problems with self-esteem. I am still single because I think I am worthless, and I do not practice my social life because I do not want to inflict my stupidity and worthless presence on other people. For whatever reason, these people all believe they are worthless and don't deserve to have a good romantic relationship like everyone else, even though the majority of these beliefs may be completely untrue. Low self-esteem results from a harsh inner voice that contributes to your negative perceptions and conviction about yourself, always telling you that you are worthless, or that you are unloved and no one cares about you, telling you that you are ugly or fat, etc. These negative perceptions of yourself can lead to serious consequences on all levels, especially romantic relationships, when you are convinced of these negative perceptions. All the good positive feelings that anyone may have for you seem to be unhealthy or illegitimate, and strange because you do not deserve them so you reflect them badly on their owners so that you see them desperate and weak. For example, when someone approaches you you start listening to these inner voices, and no matter how attractive and good that person is, you start to wonder, is that person so naive? Is he desperate and weak enough to be attracted to someone like me? As an inevitable consequence of confidence in your negative perceptions of yourself, you automatically engage in aggressive behaviors that exclude that person away from you, thinking that they will discover your darker negative aspects later, and then abandon you, so you think it's better to exclude them away from the beginning before they do. Although most of these assumptions do not exist outside the confines of your thinking, your low self-esteem makes you confused and fragile, fully believing in your worthlessness and smallness, disbelieving in the inevitability of having good qualities like others, and indifferent to the possibility, even a small one, that the other party is fully aware of the less impressive aspects of your personality, but realizes that you are not perfect, because no one is at all. Dr. Apostolo, author of the previous survey, agrees, saying in an interview with Maiden, in our study, low self-esteem and low self-confidence were the second major reason why people were reluctant to bond. These traits prevent people from making the effort to get the right one. If people think they don't deserve a partner or that they will never be able to get the right one, they won't try to find one in the first place, making them single in the end. Patient Attraction and Wrong Choice In a previous survey that shed light on why men stay single, more than 350 respondents reported that the main reason they still are is because they are attracted to inappropriate people or have had unhealthy relationships that ended in failure and harm. There is an inherent link between both the construction of psychological defense mechanisms and low self-esteem and unhealthy attraction in romantic relationships. So when you build your psychological defenses and begin to interact and act according to them, you will look at emotional relationships in another way in which you are very careful not to hurt emotionally and psychologically. So without real awareness of you choose partners who are completely unsuitable and incompetent or far from the characteristics of the person you want. For example, you may be looking for someone who doesn't share the same feelings of admiration, or love with you, or engage in a satisfying relationship with someone who is emotionally unavailable, such as someone who's engaged, another who has emerged from a failed relationship, or a third who doesn't want to engage in a romantic relationship, etc. To always blame the other party within your mind, without acknowledging the fact that you're seeking failed relationships, for the sole reason of not experiencing emotional or psychological injury if the relationship lasts, for a long time and then ends end. Bad for the other party to abandon you. Low self-esteem also plays a pivotal role in the wrong attraction in romantic relationships. As many people have an unconscious motivation to look for relationships that reinforce the critical thoughts and negative perceptions they developed about themselves in early childhood. For example, your lack of self-esteem pushes you toward toxic relationships in which the other person plays on your negative image. Perceptions that you've always believed into the point where you're starting to feel comfortable and familiar even though they're so painful. For example, if you're in a toxic relationship and see yourself as an ugly, bad, or worthless person, and the other party knows about these perceptions. They reinforce them by criticizing harsh criticisms that focus on those perceptions to the point where your sense of badness and worthlessness is magnified. The result in both of the previous two cases is not at all. In the first case relationships that follow that negative pattern of emotional attraction, which depends mainly on unavailable people or other people who do not exchange interest or admiration for you, always fail. In the second case, your low self-esteem and inability to believe that the other person views you in a positive way that is different from your negative perceptions of yourself, even if that person sees you in a truly positive way, inevitably leads to a tragic failure of the relationship, eventually reaching the same point of remaining single. Excessive self-love The scariest thing is to accept yourself completely. 
Self-love has long been stigmatized as a moral and selfish stigma, and often even confused with narcissism. Of course, there is a big difference between self-love and narcissism. Not everyone who suffers from self-love is a narcissist, as there are many contradictions and dual complexities that inhabit the narcissistic personality. Self-love is often centered around a person's ability to see their insides transparently, and to see their strengths and weaknesses realistically, and honestly, to the point where they are able to take responsibility for their well-being and mental and physical health. In contrast to self-esteem, which is characterized by low self-esteem and low self-esteem, those who have self-love have such a good self-esteem and self-esteem that they can appreciate their achievements in a realistic way despite being fully aware that they are weak in other aspects and need to improve them. Although self-love is vital to entering into and maintaining healthy relationships, just like low self-esteem, Excessive self-love is a quick recipe for the failure of romantic relationships and a major reason why you stay single. Your excessive self-love develops an inferior view of anyone who makes their way to you, and no matter how special and good that person is, you see yourself as better than him at all levels, and even more worthy of someone more competent than him. For example, when someone approaches you with some feelings of admiration or love, you automatically start comparing you to them irrationally or fairly by looking at their weaknesses and amplifying them in exchange for pointing a magnifying glass at your strengths, rather than realizing that they, like everyone else, have less distinctive and less distinctive aspects. However, when you engage in a romantic relationship with him, you feel like you are sympathetic to him, and you see that he should show gratitude and thanks throughout his life for accepting him. Another indirect way in which excessive self-love affects emotional relationships is to build psychological and verbal defense mechanisms that in turn lead to the failure of all the relationships you engage in, and consequently to remain single. According to a research study conducted at the University of Georgia, high self-esteem does not necessarily mean healthy self-esteem, as there are fragile and shallow types of excessive self-love that are no better off than low self-esteem. The results of the study showed that people with a safe and natural level of self-love were less likely to form psychological and verbal defenses than those with fragile self-esteem. Michael Cairns, principal investigator of the study and professor of psychology at the University of Georgia, follows in a university press release. People with high self-esteem of the fragile type make up for their self-doubts by engaging in exaggerated behaviors such as criticizing others, to defend, protect and promote their sense of self-esteem. For example, if you're in an emotional relationship and suffer from superficial or fragile overestimation and self-esteem, there are often psychological and verbal defense mechanisms to make up for your inner doubts about yourself. By reflecting them on the other party in the relationship by pointing a magnifying glass at their bad sides or negative qualities that you willingly accepted at first, and starting to criticize them harshly that ultimately results in the relationship failing. Fear of Commitment we have to realize that there can be no relationships unless there is commitment, unless there is loyalty, unless there is love, patience and steadfastness. Although the fear of commitment manifests itself at its best during long-term romantic relationships such as marriage, it generally affects all romantic relationships and attachments and may be a fundamental reason why you remain single. Fear of commitment at moderate levels may be a normal feeling that everyone goes through but it is classified as a social phobia when it appears strongly, and it is irrational and unjustified, to the extent that it prevents you from risking engaging in a romantic relationship and hinders you from living your normal life. Like other different types of phobias, going through traumatic experiences and relationships or experiencing negative experiences in the past may be the main reason why fear of commitment emerges and develops over time. Below these experiences are, going through a failed experience of a previous association or being let down by the other party, as well as experiencing divorce conditions between parents and childhood, or seeing quarrels, assaults and ongoing violence between them. These experiences have a fundamental impact on the development of fear of commitment that has a very complex impact on the future emotional state and prevents you from engaging in emotional relationships. Finally, besides the previous reasons that are considered as internal challenges that revolve in your unconscious mind and may not be easily perceived, isolation and routine also play a pivotal role in your remaining single. As you get older you retreat to your comfort zone, which is considered as a bubble that captivates your routine inside it and is difficult to get out of, where you feel satisfied, comfortable and safe, away from engaging in real life and entering into emotional relationships that may change your routine and turn your life upside down. So instead of pursuing a genuine romantic relationship, you'd rather stay isolated in your comfort circle. Speaking to Maiden, Dr. Apostolo says, 
Fear of commitment is another common reason why people stay single. People are afraid to engage in committed long-term relationships because they involve many compromises and usually require a lot of compromises. And some people don't prefer to make those compromises, but prefer to stay single instead. Apostolo adds to Maiden, generally, celibacy here is not a permanent condition. Most people may be able to find a suitable partner in the end. People with these reasons may not stay single forever, but they may push them to experience long periods of celibacy.